Hello, my name is Manchis and I'm a content true creator. I finished my first game after a month and a half of learning game development with zero background in programming and I decided to share how I kickstarted my learning journey. Game development is something that I've been interested in for quite some time but I kept putting it off because I always lacked confidence to do it, mostly because I was scared of coding. I have no computer science degree and during my IT classes in school I just copied my classmates homework. Spoiler alert, now coding is actually one of my favorite parts of game development and I want this video to be some kind of encouragement for people in the similar mindset that I was in. So first things first, I had to settle on a game engine and I went for Unity. And I know, I know it was a bit of a questionable choice considering that Unity did soil their pants in 2023. But the reason I went with it was because of their Unity Learn plot platform platform which had a lot of resources and it's free and I required a lot of hand-holding from the beginning. My learning journey. So in the end of April I plopped my butt cheeks down, opened the Unity Essentials pathway and started learning how all this works. And before you accuse me of clickbait because it's currently September, it just took me a while to make this video. As to the course, it was pretty useful. I learned a lot about how Unity Engine works, I even wrote my first lines of code. And the end of the course, I had this exercise where you write down your learning plan and how you plan to tackle this game development journey. Here is mine. But soon you will see that things did not go quite as planned due to unforeseen circumstances. Me. I was the unforeseen circumstances. So. Let's see some of my illusions. First is complete the Unity Essentials pathway. Good, good, that was done. Then complete the Junior Programmer pathway. You know, it's logical, makes sense. Then move on to Creative Core pathway. You know, get that learning going. And only then, you know, switch to YouTube and complete a video game tutorial from scratch. And then finally make my own first micro game. Out of all the things listed in this table, Guess what I completed? Yeah, I just jumped to creating my first game. But you see, I have an excuse for such behavior. After this Unity Essentials Pathway course, I just saw another Unity course for creating an RPG game mockup from scratch, so I decided to do that. I used the assets they provided and wrote all the code following the tutorials. Here is the final result. As you might probably guess, I did not really focus on a game fill. My main priority was just coding. So, what's next, you might wonder? Well, according to the plan, I should go on and start uh, the Unity Programmer course, you know, the Junior Programmer one. Well, I've been watching a lot of game dev beginner YouTube videos, and one advice that kept popping up was if you want to get better at programming, you have to start making your own games. Even if they're small, even if they're like so-called micro games, just start making games. And this is also a good way to escape tutorial hell that everyone keeps talking about. So after making this abomination of a game, I decided why not use the mechanics I learned and apply it to my own small game. And I also decided to add something extra for the challenge. I thought, you know what? Every game has some sort of a dialogue system, so I should add that. You know, how hard could it be? Very. It was very hard. But let's not digress for now. So after constructing a short horror story and mapping out the whole game in my notebook, I knew exactly what to do. But in much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. Before working on any kind of art, I wanted to make sure the mechanics are there and I can implement them. So I just downloaded some free assets from the Unity store and got on to work. After implementing the basic stuff like tile maps and colliders, I started to work on flickering lights, which was actually pretty easy to implement. I had the exact opposite experience, however, with the dialogue system. When I first opened the tutorial, I understood like 30% of it, so I went to search for another easier one that just focused on one-way interactions. However, I did want to have a dialogue system with multiple choices, so after some time I came back to the previous tutorial and after, you know, basically a miracle, I got it working. Just look at how many comments this script has. My brain hurt trying to understand how it works. 
Oh, and during the development, I decided to do my nails and it was satisfying to have the nails go klutz klutz, you know, on the keyboard when I'm coding, but it did increase my typos rate. I have a dialog box controller now and I'm just too afraid to change it. But I don't know, it may be less efficient, but at least I get style points. Also, I don't know how, but I did manage to break Unity once with my code. The art. After figuring out the main gameplay, I started focusing on the art. I'm pretty good at traditional art and I also dabbled in digital art, so of course the logical solution was to go with pixel art, which I had never tried before. So I bought a Sprite, which is a pixel art app, looked up some tutorials and got to work. Quite quickly and with horror, I realized that I have no idea how to make the top-down perspective work. And after fiddling with it for quite some time, I made an executive decision of not giving a fuck and leaving it as it was. In general, when my pixel art came out wonky and didn't look as I wanted it to look, I was just like, you know what? This game is going to be dark, so it's not really a big problem. I had to constantly stop and ask myself some hard questions, like, why is this ugly? Or why does this girl look like a lollipop? Oh, and I also did all the animations by myself as well, which was also new to me. And this process did not look pretty. This one, for example, looks like he's trying to hold in poop. Finishing touches. Now it was time to import my art into the game. To be honest, when I replaced the placeholder art of my main character with a new one, it felt like an end of the era. I don't know why, but this little man with his bloodshot eyes that stare right into your soul just felt weirdly relatable to me. And then I realized that none of my sprites really match in scale. So after committing some scenes and scaling down my pixel art and receiving pixels, I started making a cutscene. And I ran into a caveat. I was thinking, how do I trigger a cutscene when player is in the middle of the road? At this point, I didn't know how to make the player go up to a specific point on the map by himself. So I just decided to put a bunch of obstacles so the player has no other choice but to go through the middle. Game design at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Also, don't get me started on scene switching and memory transfer. Let's just say that some bad things happened that were nobody's fault and now I have three player controllers and three dialog box controllers. So after polishing the game, well, as well as you can polish a garbage can anyway. I'm not so proud to present you my first micro game, a walk home. This game took me about a month to make from start to finish and I published it in late June on Itch.io. This video just took me a while to make. You can play it right now by clicking on the link down below. It even has two endings. Aftermath and final thoughts. I published the game as soon as I'd finished it and I didn't check it for a while. So when I did check it, to my surprise, horror and delight, some people actually played it, which I'm actually really grateful for. So what now? So far, my game dev experience has been throwing shit at a wall to see what sticks. But in general, I want to say that game dev is not as scary as it seems. It is as fun as it is frustrating. And if you want to try it out, I say go for it. While filming this, I actually participated in two game jams, so I will share this experience in my next video. There are also some projects that I'm working on in my free time, but I will share the details on them later. Until then, see ya and thank you for watching. <clears throat>